Pick a number of this spiral. If it is positive, move forward that number of steps. If it is negative, move backward that number of steps. We'll use negative 3 as an example. Since it's negative, we'll move backward 3 places. 1, 2, 3. 5 is positive, so we'll move forward 5 places. We'll continue this process indefinitely. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. We'll slide on to 2. 1, 2. We arrive at 3. 1, 2, 3. We're at negative 2. 1, 2. We'll slide on to 1. Move forward 1. And we end at 0. No matter what number you start at, you will eventually end at 0. This is the pattern in the collapse problem, and it is governed by prime numbers. In fact, the sequence of numbers you are looking at is a brand new integer sequence, as it is not found in the online encyclopedia for integer sequences. Mathematicians have been searching for this pattern for more than 80 years. This problem, the collapse problem, or the collapse conjecture, is also referred to as the 3x plus 1 problem or the 3n plus 1 problem. There have been books written about this problem. You can see some of the titles. How to prove the collapse conjecture and the ultimate challenge, the 3x plus 1 problem. There have been hundreds of papers written on this problem. In fact, there are YouTube videos with millions of views talking about this problem. Look at the heading, Uncrackable, the collapse conjecture. Another one, the simplest impossible problem, 5 million views. But what is the collapse problem, you may ask? Why is it important? Why is the discovery of its pattern so significant? These are the questions I have actually answered in my soon-to-be-made public article entitled, On the Pattern in the Collapse Problem. A few quotations will kind of put things into perspective. But first, the collapse conjecture. The conjecture states that for any natural number, if it is even, divide it by 2. If it is odd, multiply it by 3 and add 1. At some point in this process, the answer will be 1. Hmm, that sounds simple. So let's think about the number 5. 5 is odd, so we'll multiply it by 3 to get 15. Add 1, we'll get 16. 16 is even, we'll divide by 2. 8 is even, we'll divide by 2. 4 is even, we'll divide by 2. And 1 is odd, we could multiply by 3 and add 1, but we're only going to get 4, which is going to take us back through this cycle. So we end at 1. And this is what the conjecture is saying. No matter what number you start at, you will end at 1. So here are the quotations. Kakotani says, For about a month, everyone at Yale worked on it with no result. A similar phenomenon happened when I mentioned it at the University of Chicago. Erdos, a math genius, says, Mathematics is not yet ripe enough for such questions. And Jeff Lagarius, who has worked on this problem for more than 40 years, says, This is an extraordinarily difficult problem, completely out of the reach of present-day mathematics. What makes the problem extraordinarily difficult to solve is the lack of a pattern in its trajectories. Some numbers converge to 1 quickly, like 5, while others rise and fall several times over before finally reaching 1. Take 41 for example. This is its trajectory. It has more than a hundred iterates or steps. It is for this very reason that the conjecture is sometimes referred to as the hailstone problem. Since, just like a hailstone, the numbers will rise and fall before finally reaching 1. Indeed, the numbers seem to follow no order and resist every attempt to understand their behavior. 
I'll take the next few minutes to explain the relationship between the spiral you saw at the beginning and the collapse problem. The numbers you are looking at are obviously the set of integers if the spiral continues indefinitely. I call it the integer spiral. If we consider the trajectory of the number 19, for example, this is what the collapse trajectory looks like. If we consider only the odd numbers in this sequence, we get this sequence. All of these numbers are of the form 6x plus or minus 1. If we take the x in each number, if the number is of the form 6x plus 1, we make x negative. If the number is of the form 6x minus 1, we make x positive. Then we get negative 3, 5, 2, 3, negative 2, 1, 0. All belong to the spiral. This trajectory I call the spiral trajectory. We can obtain the spiral trajectory of any integer by using the integer spiral similar to how this video started. Let's consider the spiral trajectory of 61. 61 is of the form 6x plus 1. Since we could say 6 times 10 is 60 plus 1, 61. Since it's of the form 6x plus 1, then it would be represented by negative 10 on the spiral. Here is negative 10. Since it's negative, we'll move backward 10 places. When we do so, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, we end up at 4. 4 is positive, we'll move forward 4 places. 1, 2, 3, 4. 6 is positive, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. 9 is positive, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. We slide down to 1, we move forward 1, and we are at 0. So the trajectory, the spiral trajectory of 61 would be negative 10, 4, 6, 9, 1, and 0. The sequence on this spiral is the sequence here, which I call the spiral integer sequence. Since the spiral only deals with numbers of the form 6x plus or minus 1, it is important to point out that if the collapse conjecture is true for natural numbers of the form 6x plus or minus 1, then it is true for all natural numbers. In other words, if we can prove that every integer on the spiral will converge to zero, then we would have proven the collapse conjecture. And there you have it, the long sought pattern in the collapse conjecture. Thanks for watching.